Steven here. Hello and welcome back. So when we last left off, we had an issue where we were sending our full files down and once they got through the route on content and they went to the split, which is splitting on subcategory, we were getting errors out the bat. Now we're already handling for the null route, right? So we're routing on that before if the content of the flow file is null. And you know what? This isn't very helpful here to understand that. So let's go ahead and change the wording on that. We'll go ahead and add nulls and just put null in there. Edit this relationship and say it's nulls, not subcategory. And now we can go ahead and remove that extra one. There we go. So this is our null route, right? And we're gonna end up grabbing those and bring them back in, fitting them into the evaluate JSON here. And this, no, oh, but it's not gonna be the weight. We'll replace the weight and we'll just route them straight in there. But before we do that, let's take care of the problem we have with this split. And I've got two examples down here. So if we read, it, read the text real quick for the error, uh, basically at the very end there, it says, was not a JSON array or subcategories uh, was on a JSON array compatible type or can and can now be split. So what's going on here? Well, it actually has something to do with our transform and we need to fix our transform for the jolt. Uh, so here's an example, two examples of what's going on. Anytime we have something going into the jolt spec and there's only one subcategory on it, the result that comes out is it does pull away the ID and name from the category and gives a subcategory but it's now transformed it into, because there's only one object inside of that subcategory, it's not treating it, it's not creating an array anymore. So we don't have our brackets. But when we take anything through there that has multiple subcategory objects, it does output it as a, an array still. So it maintains that uh, array relationship there. So we need to change our jolt transform spec in order to fix that. So what we'll do is we'll take this example we're looking at here and go fix our jolt. We have to stop that real quick. Go back to advance and we'll see right now, as we can see, it took our array that this was, or because it's not an array, or actually it is an array over here, but based off how our spec is set up right now, because there's one object, it comes out as a non-array. So all we need to do is go to subcategories, put our brackets in there, hit transform, and there we go. Now it puts it around there and it treats it as an array still. We'll go ahead and save that. We are going to close out here. And before we rerun everything, let's go ahead and make some changes. Let's fix the route uh, on content here to route directly into the nulls, directly into the evaluate JSON path. So, Actually, we're not gonna do it on the evaluate JSON uh, because we don't need to, right? Uh, now, when we think about this, before we get ahead of ourselves, we know there's no subcategories, right? So it doesn't need to go into the evaluate JSON path. It would be the next step we're gonna have, which is gonna be the attributes to JSON because at that point, we're done. And there it is, third one down. So this will be our next step that we're gonna work on. Bring that over here. And now let's go ahead and clear all the queues. And then delete this relationship. Take this down to attributes. We want the nulls. Go ahead and bring that off the side here. And we'll just write it around the corner there. All right, so those will come through. They'll skip the split because they would just fell there anyways. They'll skip the evaluate because there are no subcategories to evaluate, which is how we're going to set this one up. So it's going to be attribute. And then we're going to add two sections in there. So one of them is going to be the subcategories, right? Okay, so go back in here. We'll add subcategory ID, which in this case is just gonna be, oops, ID. And then subcategory name, which is name. 
All right, so that'll create our attributes. And we'll just split on, no, oh, gotta stop it, right? Split, split JSON, sub categories. So now we know what's going on here. Let's see, route content. Uh, let's just call it route on nulls. That one's done. And this is going to be create, create subcategory attributes. All right, let's clean that one. And then yeah, actually, it's this one is going to be just that attributes to JSON. That's all we're really doing with it. All right, so I think we're set up now. We can go ahead and turn things on and check it out and see what we get here. Oh, did I set this wrong? Content, oh, that should be attribute. There's no failure, no unmatch, everything should be okay. There we go. All right, so everything should be scheduled correctly. All right, so now we're ready to test all this. And the last area we had was at 637, so we're far past that. We'll go ahead and start this all over again. Things are moving. And now we just sit back and make sure we don't get any failures. 37 still. Okay, so it looks like it's working. We have our nulls going off the side and queuing up here because this processor is not completely set up yet. And it's not set up the route to anything. And then we have our queue filling up over here for the splits. Oh, is this one yeah, scheduled slowly? Okay, let's change that. So we don't have to wait all day. All right, just do all of them and get them done with. And 37 still, all right. So there we are, our queues are filling up. And are we done? So I have a couple more here, 45, there we go. We are at 45. And it looks like everything is caught up. Okay, so two, two of our queues are full. We have our nulls, and then we have everything that had a subcategory down below. All right, so let's go ahead and what we need to do now is, so these just have category attributes on them and then these have categories and subcategory attributes. Good thing about the attributes the JSON processor is, if a flow file doesn't have the attribute that you want to write to the content of the flow file, well then it's not gonna error out. It will just move on. So we just need to get this one set up and this one's gonna be pretty easy. I'll copy this out of my clipboard here and attribute list is what we're going to use. And we're going to say category ID, category name, subcategory ID, and subcategory name. And then from there, we know once we have that as JSON, we want to convert to SQL. All Take the success there, fix the relationship on the failures. And then we know we're gonna have another one too, which is put SQL. Cause that's what we'll use to write into our MySQL table. All right, so those are ready. We can go ahead and run this, fill up this queue it will overfill and have back pressure on it, but we'll be able to get this part configured after we go build a table inside of uh, uh, our MySQL server. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this. And there we go, everything's working fine, no errors there. Let's go ahead and check out, make sure we have the intended results that we're looking for, or the output. We have a null. Mm. Need to check on that one. Did I name them differently? Let's see here. 
Oh, dude. <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell me that? I wrote that all to an attribute. Oh, dang it, I did. Oh, that was my mistake. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we'll have to fix that. Which means rerunning everything, basically. But you know what? We can clear this queue. We'll get some through there before we go rerun all of it. Okay, so we can redo that, make sure it works now. There you go, perfect. So now we have a basic JSON object here and all we have is our key value pair and this is ready to go into the processor to create SQL statements and write it directly into the table. So this is perfect, exactly what we're looking for here, right? Now let's go ahead and set up our table. So I'm gonna jump us over to uh, dbeaver. Let me go ahead and turn switch this over. There we go, we're at dbeaver. We've already created the uh, table statement that we need in order to do this. There's a uh, database for Best Buy and there's no table. So we'll go ahead and create this. Refresh. Table. There you go, Best Buy categories. And this will include all the subcategories as well. So this is exactly what we're looking for here. And now we can go ahead and take a look at the other side. Want that name though, so let's take that with us. And let me switch this back over. And here we are. So let's go ahead and fill out the properties here. So we're gonna use our MySQL server. This will be a insert statement. The table name. And the catalog name. Oh, let's fix that. And everything else should be okay. I don't foresee any issues now. And let's go ahead and fix our relationships. Get our put set up correctly for the right connection. Set up the retry. Terminate the failure and success. Okay, so we're ready to write into a table. Now, I don't want to do this because I don't want to truncate it. We'll empty all of our queues. We are going to go up here now. And everything looks okay. I don't see any problems. So let's turn these two on now. And we can run this one more time. All right, so we are writing into the database and we can go ahead and jump on over to dbeaver and see if we have content in there. Now let's see, select. And we'll go ahead and run this. Oh, uh, Best Buy, oh, no one. You know, someone is probably yelling at me like, hey, you got that wrong. Best Buy categories. Run that and there we go. So what we have here is category ID, category name. So we have multiple GIF ideas. ideas. And then underneath that, we have multiple subcategory IDs and then the subcategory name. So now we can use this if we wanted to with the, uh, other API for products and say we wanted to request all of the products out of one of these categories or by a specific category ID, we can use this in conjunction with that uh, API to go ahead and do that. So in the next uh, video, we will go ahead and pick up from where we are right now, not everything is working. And in there, what we're gonna do is go ahead and set things up so that we can start working with our second API from Best Buy, which is the products API. And that API will have a couple, we'll go ahead and build out a new flow there to handle that side. And from there, uh, my idea is that if I wanted to watch a product, so say uh, because of what the API gives you access to and what it informs you of, like uh, whether things are in stock or available, 
at the store or online, I like to be able to take some products, not all of them, but we'll take a handful of products and flag them for being checked uh, in t increments of time. So say every 10, 15 minutes or something like that to check the current status of the product on whether it's available in store for pickup or is it available for the uh, online order instead. That way you can see when things are, uh, if it is available there. And then we'll write it into two different areas. We're gonna want to save some of that as a time series base. So we'll want transactions in a table someplace where we can save every pull and know the time and day it was available and when it was out of stock. So we kind of see patterns and stuff like that if we wanted to. And then I'm thinking maybe something like Elasticsearch or even Couchbase where we just create the record one time or the document once in one of those. And then we keep updating that same document with the current status from the last check we did. So that'll we'll, that's gonna be what we'll start working on next for the products category uh, or for the products API. And I hope you look forward to it. Don't forget, I'm gonna save the template for this and put it into GitHub so you can go ahead and grab that one and see all the changes there. And then uh, take, take some time if you want and hit that subscribe and like button or follow along. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.